Okay, we should be logging in now. Yeah, we are inside. Okay, cool. Okay. There we go. Hi guys, how are you? Hey everyone. I'm going to open also the YouTube link, okay? Mm -hmm. Just to see. Yeah, we'll give some people uh, some time to come in. Looks like we have one person watching. I don't know if that's one of us, um, but we can go ahead and get started in a minute here. <laughs> Let's, um, let me see how I hear myself. Mm -hmm. Open also the YouTube link, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it sounds yeah, nice. That sounds good. All right, hey hey guys, go ahead, say hi in the chat. Let's see uh, who is in here, if you guys are in the Flamenco yeah. Discord, one of our students, uh, let us know. Uh, we'll be watching the chat. But uh, thank you guys for coming in. Uh, in this class, um, I'm joined by my teacher, Mario Moraga. Uh, once again, always good to have him. And we are going to discuss um, some adagrias today and some falsettas because you guys saw I was doing some polls for my channel and we wanted to see what you guys wanted to see in videos and live streams. And a lot of you guys, about 40 something percent of you guys said you wanted to see beginner falsettas. Um, so we're gonna do that today and we're gonna do it in adagrias. Um, so that's what we'll be doing today together. So. Uh, Mario, good to have you again, my friend. Um, go ahead and if you want to introduce yourself again for those viewers that haven't met you yet. Remind one second and sharing and sharing the, the link on the Discord group. One second. There we go. Hi guys, so nice to see you again. So for those people that didn't see myself before here on such channel, uh, I'm Mario from Spain, I'm flamenco guitar player. Um, yeah, I love always to share time with Satch and talk about different things and different points that we like to discuss together. So we decided because of a few questions that he asked on his YouTube channel to talk about today about alegrías also, and also like the most, the most beginner um, um, things that you have to know to start feeling and learning you know, alegrías style. And so, first of all, we're going to talk. I'm going to share my screen, okay? Because I'm going to let you know a little bit, just a little bit about not history, it's like how we situate, how we organize um, alegrías into the flamenco tree, not into the flamenco world. So, let me one second. I'm going to share my screen. And while Mara was pulling that up, uh, for those of you who don't know Adagrias or what we're talking about, um, Adagria is a palo of flamenco or a style of flamenco, one of the really popular ones, especially with uh, singers and dancers. Um, and it's a 12 beat style. We've done Solia on this channel before. I did a couple classes with Mario on Solia. Um, it's very, it's similar to Solia in terms of the structure, but it's in a different key. It's going to be in a major key instead of that Phrygian mode that we were playing before. Yeah, that's it. So that, that's true that we're still on the 12 beats measure, but thinking about like a major key, like classical music, like any music style that you're playing on a major key. On this case today, we're going to talk about E major and also A major if you if we have time. But I think so, okay, we're going to talk about uh, both of them. We also use Spain on Spain a lot, the C major key, uh, but we're going to talk about that today. I will let you know why. Let me share the screen right now. You see the screen, right? The such? Yeah. Okay. So that's the web that I always recommend about Flamencopolis.com. That's from Faustino Nunez. That's a that's a really from it was my he was my teacher in the conservatory, and I recommend him a lot always and so as soon as you get inside of the web so you can buy like a posters like a things to post on the on your wall that's really nice but a really interesting thing is this 
tree, you know, this like family tree of the flamenco, in which you can see that he's dividing the flamenco styles on four different groups. Like in the center is always the traditional music, because thanks to the traditional music, flamenco exists. And after the traditional music, you're going to find Seguirilla group, tango group, solea group, and fandang. So if we go into the solea group, okay, inside of the solea, we're going to have alegrías, okay? We have to, we have to say inside of the alegrías style, we, ca we have to divide in two different groups, like alegrías de Cádiz and cantinas, okay? More or less, both of them, all of them are on the same style group, but inside of this family, we have to divide cantinas, one side, and alegrías, another side. When we say alegrías, I'm going to play alegrías. I am saying that I'm going to play alegrías de Cádiz. Cádiz style. Well, there is one style, Cádiz. We're going to talk about that in a few minutes. And we're going to study today alegrías, okay, de Cádiz. If you say, man, I'm going to sing cantinas. We're going to sing around these signs. Cantinas, Mirabra, Rosa, Caracole, Romera, eh, Alegría de Córdoba, eh, Mirabra, I don't know, yeah, Mirabra. That's another point of a lot, an, another group of styles, okay? Just to let you know like the different, okay? Today, let's talk about, let's talk about Alegrías. <coughs> Alegrías de Cádiz comes from Cádiz, at least like the most south city on, on Andalusia. That's a really funny place that people are really funny there. And also the Alegrías style looks really funny when you hear that from the, from the other side, no? And that's a really nice flamenco style to start learning flamenco after tango. From my opinion, first of all, is tangos because you learn like the four beats measure. It's really easy to understand with the flamenco techniques. And once you learn the flamenco techniques, the next palo style to start learning is alegrías because you are getting inside of the 12 beats feeling, but alegrías has a really easy way to understand the 12 beat measure. It's not, for example, solea, bulería, or seguirilla sometimes. Alegría is so much easier to, to understand how it works. That's a, that's a nice point to add inside of the of the of the 12 bit measure in a really easy way. And why I say that it's easy? It's because every chord change, if imagine that we are on E major, we are always going to be between E major, B7, E major, B7, E major, B7. So more or less the 99% of the times you are going to be, change, be changing the chords on the beat number three or ten. Always. It's like a, like a really close thing, no? Normally, maybe you can find like a really difficult singer to accompany and you have to make little strange things, but it's not typical. More or less, every singer is going to fit the chords on the three, ten, ten, three, three, ten, ten, three. So because of that, it's really easy you not know, to find a way to understand that and to play it on a really easy way. Um, we're going to find like three different keys on, on Alegrías, Cantinas, like C major key, E major key, A major key. So like the, like the key, like the most important key on Alegrías is C major. It's like the Cadiz sound. It's like the Cadiz feeling. When I see a C major chord playing, I hear I think in Cadiz, because it sounds like really traditional. But usually, uh, and so much more in the US or in any country that it's not speak Spanish speakers, if you accompany dancers, you are always going to be playing on E major, because the dancers has a part of the, of the full part of the dance. There is a part called silencio, to silence in Spanish, okay? But it's on the minor, rel minor relative, not on the minor key. So if we are playing on E major, this part is going to be on E minor. So imagine that if you are playing on C major, to play in C minor, it's awful. It's just horrible. It's not nothing. I, not, I don't know how to play on C minor with not using a technical capo. No? 
So because of that, always when you accompany dancers, you are going to play on E major. It's like the most common key of playing. The A major key. A major key was composed a lot of years ago. Sarikas, Niño Ricardo, Juan Martin, all those guitar players start to compose solo guitar on A major. They became really famous, but not for a company, it's more for solo, I think, okay? So today we're going to talk about the E major um, patterns and also the A major patterns, because you are going to find them a lot. C major and G major is really easy. We're going to talk about a little bit because it's really easy, but it's not the most common for you. Because C major here, it's be used by singers, men singers, because the tone is lower, and it's easier for men to sing on a C major key instead of E major, okay? But we're going to talk about the E major and A major. Please, if you have any question, please leave the question on the chat today or maybe when you see the recording, whenever you want, okay? And that's it, man. So let's see, the first of all, the pattern, okay? The compass pattern of E major. And after that, like a really easy falsetta and beginner falsetta if you want to, to have like the pattern and also a small melody uh, thing to thing to use and and to and to play okay yeah and if mario if you want to just demonstrate a couple of snippets of adequate just so our viewers can hear this and <laughs> we mentioned uh in the solia class that solia uh, <laughs> the word solia meaning from soledad solitude so we have this emotion, but we're going to alegría. And for those that don't speak Spanish, the word alegría literally translates as joy, happiness. So this is the polar opposite in terms of what we would describe as the aire of the palo or the emotion and just style of playing. So yes. alegría is much more uplifting, happy. Besides this, then silver goes minor. That's a different story, but um, mostly it's all upbeat, happy, joyful, comedic, you know, and people yeah. having fun. It's happier because two things. First of all, the key, because it's not the same thing to play soleado or play that's so much cool what's, what's happening here. Also because of the key and also because of the rhythm. It's also a 12 bit measures, the solea and alegría. La solea is like slowly and alegrías it's so much good okay okay so let's start let's use a capo or without capo man what do you prefer uh, maybe without, we'll keep, just in case. yeah keep. maybe without just in just case, case uh, anybody don't have the, the capo at home okay mm -hmm. and okay, let's start with okay on E major key, we are going to use, at this case today, just the E major chord and the B7 chord. Okay, E major is going to be fifth string, fourth string, and third string. And the B7 is going to be fifth, fourth, and third. Okay. B7 is going to be the dominant. Let's select the tension. We need to solve on. E major, always, okay? So and for the beginner students as well, an easy trick for switching these chords, because I've had people have trouble with this before, keep that middle finger held down the whole time that's on the second fret of A, and just move your index and ring. If you have that little anchor finger, it's gonna make it easier for you to switch. You don't have to worry about picking up every finger and putting it back down. So just try and keep that middle finger held the whole time and use that as your anchor to move between these two. That's it. That's a good point. Uh, we start on E major, okay? Mm -hmm. We're going to, I'm going to turn down a little bit the camera and also make it closer. Okay. We're going to see, on, we're going to do E major, like the beat number one with a golpe with the index here. One, two, and on B seventh, we're going to do like a Dirty rasgueo. It's like I don't want one, two, three. I want go down. How you can? Okay, the one. It doesn't matter the sound. One, two, three. Okay, work. One, two, three. No, 
I think it's so much better with the drums here, okay? Yes. One, two, three. You will do a golpe on the, on the wood, okay, with the ring. So, one, two, three. to do this from the beginning. Let's do the seven, eight, nine. We can do it in two different ways. Like the easy one, we can keep going with the indies. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, nine, ten. Let's like the easy one. Or the difficult one is going to be seven, rasgueo. But this one, this rasgueo is not dirty, it's like a really mm -hmm. clean rasgueo. It's like ring, middle, index, down, and index up. Okay? The rasgueo that you can stay at home. I use that a lot. I don't want one, two, three, one. One, two, three, four. No, I want. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Ring, middle, index, index. Ring, middle, index, index. Okay? That's an exercise. If you don't know how to do Brazil, that's a really nice exercise. And this so, is the 16th note as well for those of you that know your rhythm. <laughs> so it's a kind of a one E and a two E and a kind of feel. In this case, it's on seven. So it could be seven and a, or you can just count da 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 if you want to count it that way. Whatever helps you best internalizes rhythm to stay in your compass. That's the best way to learn it for you. That's it. So in this case, if we arrive to the seven, one, two, three, four, and five, and six, and seven, eight, nine. That's it, this part, okay? Seven, one rosgeo, one, seven, seven, Same close as Solea, okay, on E major, six first, thumb in this, okay, and now from the fourth string, four, third, second, in this from the first, ten, eleven, twelve, and, okay. Easy way. Okay. Okay, that's really important to know. To know. Could we not for the compass mat pattern one? Do you think mm -hmm. it's okay? Yeah. So let's do it a few times uh, running through and then people can follow along. Maybe Noromi Q. Thanks for streaming this. Thanks for you, man. Okay, so the last day, E major. Let's talk about the falsetta on E major, just to finish mm -hmm. one key and then we start another key. 
Yeah, so we're going to be discussing the Escobia falsetta, uh, which is one of the important parts of the dance. Um, so if you're accompanying dancer, but even if you're playing solo, you're probably still going to be playing Escobias, um, especially in Solia, but of course in Alegria as well. Um, so the word Escobia, um, little, it's a broomstick, right, Mario? They call it. Or to <laughs> Mascova is what you use to clean the floor. Yeah, like a broomstick. Mm -hmm. So, and the reason why it got that name is it has to do with the foot steps of the dancer, the zapateado, and just sweeping their feet across. So, yeah. this falsetta that Mara is going to show first in the E major key that we just did is accompanying that part of the dance. So, there's a really strong pulse on all the beats that the dancer is following. That's it. Okay, so and that's why every dance has a scobilla. Mm -hmm. So every dance that you accompany is going to have like a really traditional music part for the scobilla. For example, this one that we're going to show is Alegrías, Tangos, maybe not Tangos, you know, Taranto has a scobilla, mm -hmm. eh, Soleá has a scobilla, Seguirilla has a scobilla. Eh, every dance normally is going to have like a really traditional music for the scobilla. After that, every dancer can compose their own, their own scobilla, but like a traditional way of dance, every dance, okay? So every dance style is going to have their own escobilla. So let's discuss about the E major Alegría escobilla. Mm -hmm. So let's do, that first of all, just the melody with the thumb. And after that, we're going to see different ways to do that, each of, each of one more difficult, okay? Mm -hmm. You're always going to hear this melody within the Alegría and the escobilla. And even when you start changing keys to the A and the C, it's going to sound very, very similar. So as you guys are learning this Escobia, try and get this melody into your head. And even when you go and listen to Aragria, no matter if it's Paco or Vicente Amigo or, or whoever, um, you'll hear similar kind of melodies within their Aragrias. That's it. So when you hear that, you know what part of the structure of Aragria we're in. Yeah. So let's see the melody, okay? As, as such says, please remember the melody on, the, on your mind, okay? Seven, eight, nine, three, That's it. You can do that twice, three times, four or seventeen. Okay, it's going to depend on the dancer. Okay. Mm -hmm. So what the, what's going to change? It's going to be. I'm going to do one more time. A close. Okay. Remember the close of the alegría. We're going to do a lot of things now. transcription and I'm going to make you're going to make a photo of that. You are, I'm going to share the screen, don't worry. Okay. Here there is a question does Alegria San Solia have the same beats accented? Yes. Okay, one, two, three. Four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Mm -hmm. And even in just a simple melody, you can hear those pulses that are still on those beats. Even if some of them aren't as strong, maybe you can still hear it. one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, one, two, three. So you'll hear even with the melody, and you kind of sing it to yourself. You'll hear that three, six, eight, ten, twelve 
accent that we did in Sylvia. She's like, Alegria is more of a mid-tempo kind of feel, so it's a little <laughs> faster, not as slow as the Sylvia. That's it. So that's like the most easy way of playing that, okay? After that, we can see like two more different ways. Just with the thumb, it's the first one. No? The second way is adding an index always after each thumb, for example. one is with arpeggio. But the bass is always the same. Okay, that's another level. Okay, first of all, please, the melody. After that, with the indies. And if you have that, okay, try with arpeggio. You can do arpeggio going up. Or going down. How you want, okay? Mm -hmm. This one with the index, that's not for make it easier for like starter people. No, because when it goes increases speed with the dancer, I cannot do that you. So I can do that at this speed. You know, mm -hmm. the problem is that you can I not able to do other page. So and yeah. you have to use just the index to make it quickly and be able to keep going with the melody at the speed yeah. that the dancer is dancing, you know? And trust us when Mario and I both say that the dancer will pick up the speed like that. Because yeah. this is this is their part of the, the show, the Escobia. This is where they're showing a lot of footwork. They will pick up the speed. And there's usually a transition between in this case alegrías and burrerías. Because mm -hmm. Alegría is dancer and dance and Soleá dance, when they increase the speed with the Escobilla, they finish on the Bulería style with a really high tempo mm -hmm. uh, part, no? So that's yeah. a point they use to increase the speed from here. increasing the speed on a really more space, you know, not just on two measures. It's like 10, 12, 14 measures, okay? Mm -hmm. But that's a way, that's the moment when we increase a lot of speed and we finish dancing bulerias instead of alegrias. And they'll call that the bulleria de Cadiz, usually, um, as it picks up speed and it starts to have what sounds like it's starting on the 12. And even though it's more of an advanced thing, um, not necessarily for the absolute beginners, but eventually you'll start hearing. <laughs> Here, it sounds like a border deer, right? You have that groove now, but that's usually at the end as the dancer picks up their speed. That's it. That's it man. Uh, and that's A major, man. Let's talk a little bit about the A major. It's the same thing with the right hand on the compass pattern, but in, instead of doing E and B7, we're going to do A major and E7. It's going to be. The same way with the right hand, but we change the chord on the left, left hand. And about the Escobilla, Such played me a, a one a, a few minutes ago. Remember, remind me, the, remember me the, the last part because it's... Yeah. <coughs> so, so it's still between the A and the E. Um, and you're basically, for the beginner <laughs> six, you're pretty much just holding these chords the whole time. 
Um, so you're going to hold that A major, and we recommend the flamenco way of holding A major with two fingers if you can, middle finger, second fret on the B, and then your pointer finger is going to grab D and G, also second fret. So the melody here is you're on the D string, grab with your pinky fourth fret on A, the D string again, and then here's our little remate. Same as before, right? Thumb, index, thumb, 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 index. But now it's on A. So. I'm gonna repeat that. Seven, eight, nine. On 10, we're gonna go to the E7. 10, E11, 12, and. Same thing, thumb, index, thumb, thumb, thumb. Thumb again, in this case. Um, so, so far, one, sorry, um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. From here into the second compass of this, we go on the second fret of A, the thumb, fourth fret on E, to the A string again, to our Thumb, index, thumb, 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 index kind of thing. And then repeat, and then we go back to A. So the whole thing. And once in a while, I grab something with the pinky to get more on the bass, but that's it. And you hear it's very similar to what Mario just did on the E major. You still hear that melody. Da, 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 da. It's that same kind of melody, it's just that we're in a different key. Um, and of course, from here, um, kind of like what Mario showed, that's the simplest version, it's just playing with the thumb. Um, next, you can do the, the ayudado, as I call it, the thumb and index. <laughs> straighter sounding and then of course with um, arpeggio and you hear that we can change this up we don't have to play as straight um because sometimes i go right i'm doing a quick kind of arpeggio and then some i dot changes up and just play around with right hand techniques but the melody stays the same so you, you do have some freedom to change things here but that's the basic thing um, and evolving the technique starting with the thumb then the thumb index and then into arpeggio great okay man so that's it you know touch anything that else that you think that you can we talk we can talk about uh, i'll show um kind of an old school thing i've learned um same a major thing that I've seen, um, I think Juan Serrano did once, or Juan Martin, one of those two, where you do that basic Escobilla, and then you do it again, so it's basically four compasses. Uh, this time, though, trouble strings here. So it starts the same. And you do that and then you go uh, to the E string, first string, five, four, two, open, three, two, on the B, and then switch chords to E7. <coughs> we do the same thing. Uh, I'm sorry. Kind of just throw this in there if you want to play even more melodic bits within the same 
kind of phrase. Of course, if you're playing with a dancer, you would have to judge if they want to keep going yeah. and this will be it. But if you're playing solo, you can absolutely do this. Yeah, that's a, that's a nice point. That's if you play solo, that's a nice point. If you play with dancer, maybe you can use, it's going to depend on the steps that she or he is doing with the, while he's dancing or she dancing. Great, man. That is why I think like that's a thanks off to the introduction that we make, like the most easy patterns. That's a really nice way to understand and feel the 12 bit. If you see all the melodies that we are doing, all the patterns are really inside of the tempo. One, two, three, four. Okay, maybe in the future it's not our focus, but right now it's to feel the all the bits of the twelve measure, twelve bit measure that we are talking mm -hmm. about. Okay, and also the other the other key memory as we talk about E major and E seven, we talk about E major and B seven. We can also do as a traditional way of playing Alegria C major and G seven. Okay, and the scoria is going to be. Falsetta, more or less, mm -hmm. yeah, but the sound of the, of, the, of, the, of the first part, it's like the same as Kobe Yassan. Mm -hmm. okay. And Mario mentioned earlier about Cantinas, but um, Adegria is in the Cantina family, and a lot of um, Western students um, and what is written in books will say that the C major key is Cantina. And it's true, but it's not the whole truth. Um, it's usually what the singer does that makes it different from an Adegria, right, Mario? Um, so you can still play an Adagria and C, and then Cantinas has different legends, from what I understand. Yeah. Normally into the Cantinas, so Caracoles, mm -hmm. that's one of is going to be on C major. The rest of them usually are going to be on E major. You can play in every key, but normally, traditionally, okay, Caracoles is going to be on C major, and the rest of them, of them is going to be on E major normally. Alegria Secadi could be played on every key, but like the traditional one is C major. But today I play the most of times on E major key. Mm. Any question, guys, on the chat? If you want to ask something, please be feel free to do that. And hopefully, the, this new structure of doing the lives is uh, entertaining to you guys, and hopefully. You guys wanted to learn that stuff and that's why i wanted to do those polls because i wanted to see what you guys wanted to learn specifically um, if you guys haven't voted in the polls before go on to my channel and under the community tab there's a few of them there's one on um what you would want to see in live streams or videos that i post on my channel the <laughs> other one is what's your favorite follow i listen there's only five that's the most options you can put on the polls on youtube and then um what technique uh, flamenco technique do you want to practice or learn so i have three of those so if you guys haven't voted uh go ahead and vote if you would like and i'm going to keep watching those and see how the numbers change great so that's all such i think just the last thing is to talk about our course that we're getting ready mm -hmm. and and guys if you're watching this video and you arrive to this part if you do any of the exercises that we teach on the lesson, on this lesson, and you upload them to your Instagram and Facebook account and you tag touch or myself, we will have like a really special gift uh, for you about yeah. our course online and all the things that we are getting ready. Okay, just don't forget to tag myself or maybe such, whatever you mm -hmm. prefer, and we will send you a, like a really special gift. I think that you are going yeah. to enjoy it now. Mm -hmm. And we would love to see your progress. So um, if you want to tag myself on Instagram, my Instagram is at Diablo underscore Flamenco. So same name as the channel. And if you want to tag Mario, he is at Mario Moraga Flamenco. That's it. That's it. So that's us. Thanks, Satch. Thanks, guys, for being with us, for people that are right now live, and also for people that are going to watch that on another recording.
So thanks for coming. Thanks for your question. Feel free to ask us whatever you want. Okay. Thank you guys for coming. I hope this was a fun class for you. A nice short one, short and sweet, but still uh, really useful information and something that you will absolutely be using whether you play solo or you start a company. Great. Bye-bye, guys. Okay. Take care. See you next time.